Hey folks, welcome to the Two Witnesses Live. We're excited to be here with everybody today. We have a very interesting topic to discuss. Yeah, let's get into this. Watchful here with us, and we have Ben. And Ben's going to bring some interesting stuff to the table. He really knows his stuff when it comes to space weather, and I've been following him for quite some time. And if you guys haven't seen any of his Earth's disaster cycle stuff that he's posted, it is well well worth the watch it's uh it's gonna it's gonna explain things in the proper way uh, different from what of the a lot of the mainstream narrative that's being pushed so it's just it's something that i've learned to appreciate over time because he doesn't sugarcoat it he just says it how it is how you doing yep. today ben it's uh finally a nice day here in colorado i'm, I'm doing well <laughs> thanks for the invite no absolutely uh, as far as the, uh, if I'm going to kind of cut to the chase, it's how far along in this Earth's disaster cycle, which which phase are we in for folks that have kind of seen your stuff? I know that you, in your couple of your videos, there was there was like a 10 year window. I know we've had a lot of activity with the sun and whatnot, so I haven't followed it as close as you do. Right. Well, um, you know, some of the scariest things that are going to happen are probably hopefully, at least a decade away. But we still have uh, things progressing in a pretty significant manner. Um, when I first made the forecast that, you know, we, as, an, as a modern, electrified civilization, we weren't going to make it past the late 2030s or 2040s, it seemed kind of crazy to some people. But more and more things keep happening, and... Uh, you know, from the natural side of things, that seems right on point. From the human lunacy standpoint, uh, we may have even more problems before that. So, um, all of it's yeah. in play. It's, you know, the, the Carrington event was the last one from, if I understand data correctly, that was very significant. And if, according to your research, these happen uh, almost every hundred years. Is that right or am I wrong? I mean... Yeah, they're, uh, they probably happen on the sun, somewhere on the sun, about every 80 to 100 years. One of them, you know, facing Earth about every 150 to 200 years. Okay. And last one was 165 years ago. So we are well within that window waiting to take another huge blast from the sun. Uh, based on wow. some of the cycles and the data, this one probably will be even stronger than the last one. The sun's been very active lately, too. Yeah, I mean, the, the sun has an 11-year cycle. We are approaching the maximum of the 11-year period. Um, very happy that the last couple of days has, have actually been uh, a little quieter. Uh, it's not going to last for long with this many sunspots and this much activity in general. So uh, they expect the actual peak of the sunspot cycle to be later this year. And uh, that'll probably mean we have, you know, another two, two and a half, maybe three years of high activity before we go back down into, you know, just a couple of years of lower activity, uh, after which the sun will ramp back up in the 2030s. Hmm. Hmm. So there's... That's interesting. So um, you probably aren't familiar with my work. Uh, one of the things that I do is I'm, I'm really into studying the astrological signs in correlation to scripture, especially in, in regards to end time events. And there's, there's a couple things that I've noticed. I don't expect you to, to be aware of this, but it would be awesome if you did. But I have, uh, I have another channel called I Am Watchful. And I'm speculating that we're somewhere between uh, the opening of seal number three and seal number four, based on astrological signs. And it's, it's based on Revelation 4, where it talks about the, the throne surrounded by the green rainbow and surrounded by the four living creatures. I, I speculate okay. that this is that that's basically painting a celestial clock. I know a lot of people think that that's a picture of what it's like in heaven or, you know, what it's like in the throne room. But what I found interesting is when I, when it just dawned on me, green rainbow, I thought of the Aurora Borealis. So in Stellarium, I went up and I looked down at the Earth as if I was looking down from the North Star. And you would 
be looking at the Aurora Borealis around the North Pole. And in the corners, you see um, the constellations Leo, Taurus, Ophiuchus, and Aquila, which just happen to match the descriptions of the four living creatures. So you have uh, the lion, the calf, the face of a man, and the flying eagle. And further on in Revelation 4, it talks about the, uh, what is it, the 24 elders casting their, th uh, their crowns before the throne. I had noticed that in December of 2019, there was an eclipse that happened to be right underneath Aquila. That was the one that was uh, above Sagittarius, which is the man riding on the horse, and he has a bow and he has a crown above his head. I'm like, man, that's, that's awfully convenient you know, imagery to match the rider on the, on the white horse who's given a crown and a bow. And the interesting thing is, is that actually continued, that pattern continued. So you had an eclipse in Aquila or below Aquila. You had one in Ophiuchus, which is another one of those living creatures. And then there was one in Taurus. So that's where I got this idea that we're, we're potentially within seal number three. And that would mean that the last one would probably be in, in Leo, right? So I'm not, and so this is why I'm not entirely sure if we're in seal number three or seal number four, because the first three, there were events that happened on the days of those eclipses. So the first one was the beginning of the pandemic. The second one literally happened on the day that they declared our current administration, uh, the man who's in charge uh, and head of the current administration. And it was also the same day that he took control of Operation Warp Speed. And then the third one happened on the day that they actually yoked together the United States and the United Kingdom. So there's these, these events that line up with the Bible that in my timeline, it's like, it seems like we're potentially living in these end time events. And with you and your work, you know, talking about our disaster cycles, it, I just can't help but wonder, you know, are, you know, is your research showing you the, the wrath that's talked about when the, uh, the seven bowls and the seven trumpets are poured out to where, you know, men are scorched with fire. You have the, you know, the, the stars falling from heaven, things like that. Have you, have you associated any of the things that you've seen scientifically with some of those things in the scripture? Well, certainly. And you mentioned, well, you didn't mention the, the numbers, but uh, you hinted at Revelation 16, 8 there. Fourth angel pours out his vial upon the sun and the power is given unto him to scorch men with fire. Um, right. That's absolutely what the sun is going to do. Um, wow. I tend to think that... Um, I tend to think that ancient people knew the difference between stars and meteors, you know, stars and shooting stars. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, you know, obviously entire stars are not going to fall down into Earth's atmosphere. But I, right. I also don't believe they were talking about um, meteors either. I, I kind of believe that they were, you know, that's when the Earth actually turns over. And when that happens, the stars you see in the sky aren't the same stars that you have been seeing your whole life. Yeah. Um, and hmm. it would appear that they were coming down somewhere over the horizon in some distant part of the Earth, which would line up actually with uh, a book that some people don't favor putting among uh, biblical texts. But I, I have some respect for the Gnostic text, specifically uh, the book of Enoch. You know, mm -hmm. Chapter 65 says, and Noah saw that the earth turned over and knew its destruction was near. Um, wow. That's, that's, I don't quite know how, how you leave that one out, but apparently right. th those in charge of, you know, things that be said that that one should be left out. I don't think it should have been, but yeah, I, I do think that a lot of this is, is tracking pretty well and not just from a scientific standpoint, but, Take a look at the way they say people individually and nations will behave um, and mm. some of the things that we're going to be seeing. Um, the way that this clown world, I mean, and that's even putting it lightly, um, this world is basically succumbing to a lot of things that seem pretty evil. And yeah. it's amazing that both the science and the culture – 
seem to be tracking along pretty well. And not just, you know, from a biblical standpoint, but scientifically, it's all understandable why things would be happening that way, given what is actually transpiring here on the planet. And, you know, I don't believe that when it's time, you know, Jesus looks at his watch and be like, oh, daddy. <laughs> um, he, he will use the things that are familiar to us, the things we see every day. And it will be right. by the laws that govern the world and this realm as we know it already. Math, geometry, yep. nature, yep. frequency, harmonics, things like that. Um, yeah. You know, we were talking offline just before the show started that it's kind of weird how science and religion are syncing up like this. But at the same time, uh, I have always interpreted, have the eyes to see, um, do your best to know him. You, you can't text God. So, right. so how do you get to know him? What are you supposed to be seeing? The the engineering that went into this place. You know, I, I know the, the subatomic... And I know the cosmologically uh, cosmologically large, and uh, a lot of things in between. And I don't see any evidence for this place where we are being some random occurrence of chaos and gravity and collisions over billions of years. There's all the evidence that this place was engineered. And oh yeah, you know there have been several major scientists who have said something to the effect of your first dose of hard science makes you an atheist. But at the end of that road, you know God exists. Um, you know, I, that is a quote from, from one of them, but several of the scientists that are considered the most important scientists throughout history have come to some kind of similar conclusion. And, um, you know, it was a lot easier for me. I, I'm not sure how some of them pulled it off, but we are living in the information age. Everything from how the tiniest pieces of an atom work to how galaxies evolve and how they work together. Uh, electric fields and magnetic fields across vast parts of space. Now we have all the tools to almost more easily come to that conclusion. And so... It's right. a nice little tangent I went on here, but uh, the, the point is that the point is that yes, I I happen to see all of this coming together quite mm. nicely, and to to the point that we were discussing before we actually jumped on air about how science and religion are coming together. Um, it's long been my opinion, and it's now it's now my firm conclusion that having the eyes to see and getting to know Him means studying this place that was engineered yeah, for us. So, well said. Well yeah, said. Appreciate that. Book of Enoch. You know, you, you, yeah, I was just going to mention. You know, the Book of Enoch. I wasn't actually aware uh, that I've only started reading the Book of Enoch probably in the last four years. I was familiar with it in college. I went to I went to school to actually study theology. I was familiar with it, but that was kind of the taboo books. You know, the apocryphal books are like you got to master the basics before you get into that. And I'm really kicking myself for not getting into Enoch way sooner. But, you know, it is what it is. But I wasn't aware that it actually mentioned that the uh, that the world flipped. And that was actually going to be one of the questions I was going to ask you about is, is this polar, this pole shift, is it going to reverse the effects uh, that happened after the flood to where we noticed that the uh, the lifespan of people dramatically was reduced after the flood, you know, because before the flood, you had people living to a thousand years after the flood, you know, it, it dramatically dropped. And I've seen research from, I can't remember who it is. It's one of the Genesis study groups that has, they've done studies with, uh, uh what was it? It's, um, uh, the, uh, barometric pressure tanks where they adjust the atmosphere and the oxygen in order to simulate pre pre flood conditions. And they found that they can extend like the lifespan of like insects, like a gnat or a fly. They'll, they can extend its life like three times, three generations. Uh, things like uh, copperhead uh, snake venom becomes, it switches from being toxic to being healing. When you look at it underneath a microscope, hmm. um, 
you know, with before they put it in this in the chamber, it looks like spaghetti. Afterwards, it looks like a lattice, and it has healing properties. I'm I'm wondering, mm -hmm. uh, just tying this back in together to the revelation where it talks about you know people wanting to die but they're not able to. I'm wondering if that's not talking about this pole shift having some kind of effect on people to where healing is increased, health benefits, things like that, to where as the creator puts things back to the way things were before the flood, you know, setting up his kingdom. If, if, have you ever heard of anything like that? Is there any validity to that kind of theory? I've certainly heard things like that in my line of work. Yeah. I hear many things, whether the truth is among right. them is always initially yeah. unclear. Um, I, I don't have any information that I could give on that one. I think it's interesting. Mm -hmm. I've all, I have been fascinated by the stories of how long people used to live. Um, I think a lot of that might have to do with, you know, changes in our DNA if that's to come. Um, mm -hmm. cause I, I really don't believe that it's just random mutations here and there. I kind of see our DNA right. as a cosmic antenna, uh, both transmitter and receiver. Uh, which would mean its orientation is a function of its electromagnetic and vibrational frequency environment. Yes. Which would mean it's going to transition to something else. I don't think that transition is going to be fun. Um, <laughs> there is no free lunch. Um, yeah. It's not like something's going to click and we're all just going to magically be enlightened and start floating around everywhere and talking to each other telepathically and things like that. I think it's going to be painful. Um, a very painful yeah. transition if such if something like that were to occur um, yeah but yeah I I'm interested in it I don't have any any uh, anything scientific I could give you interesting wow. interesting yeah it's um, it, it's it's a fascinating time for sure it's a uh, it's really just fantastic in a way just to watch everything unfold exactly how it was written uh enoch is one of my favorite books out of all of them and we we've gone into detail over in different shows on why the old you know the early church took them out and i think they took them out for a reason because if you look into it in any great detail the book of enoch was probably the most popular book out of all the religious texts from that time period, it was yeah. what everybody was familiar with in the early days of the church. So I speculate, why did, you know, Ben, why do you think the, the church would take the book of Enoch out? What were they trying to hide? And it's interesting that they found the Dead Sea Scrolls in the same time period as many other things. Like they found them in 1947 and a year later, the Israel was formed in a nation in 1948. That can't be by coincidence. That was also the year that the United States government discovered and classified the evidence that the Earth turns over. Uh, Project hmm. Nanook in the Arctic, led by Major White. Do you guys know this uh, story? Uh, when he went, to an, he went to Antarctica? No, I'm sorry. He, he went to the Arctic up north. Okay. Um, and... This is interesting. They classified all of this information, but Major White saved documents from Project Nanook, saved documents from the Pentagon meetings to give to his son, Ken White, who then published the book World in Peril uh, hmm. several decades later. And the goal was to keep this stuff secret and then several decades later publish it all. Um, essentially what they discovered, and you know, the reason they went up, they were worried about Russia coming over the top. And the first thing they needed to do is figure out how do we navigate up here? Um, because when you're flying so close to the magnetic pole, a lot of your directions aren't able to be, I mean, it's a different flying environment, basically. Okay. Right. And so they had to locate the magnetic pole and they had several teams that were going and, and looking. And then they're like, well, wait a minute. We, we see the strongest signatures right here. Like, 20 meters that way, there's remnant evidence. And then 60 meters that way, there, there's remnant evidence. And so they figured out the pole was moving. And so they started digging. And they found that, you know, the first, the, the top layer was full of polar fossils. 
but then the layer under that was tropical fossils and then polar fossils and tropical fossils and, uh, alternating back and forth the only way you have that is if that region wasn't at the poles it was at the equator before um right two, two other interesting things and we can dive deeper into that um in that book it is well documented that admiral bird was up there and part of that research and part of that exploration the same guy that, that went time, yeah the sa- that's the time he claimed in his book he was in antarctica that's what he i was getting ready to in, say he wasn't in antarctica doing any of that stuff he was up in the north pole oh. confirmed documented with major white and so one has to wonder if it was some sort of diversion the, the book that he wrote the other thing we have to think about is this actually tells us a little something um, about the mammoths as well. The mammoths that they've found close to the Arctic, you know, the ones that were flash frozen with food undigested right. in their mouths and stomachs. Right. Mammoths needed to eat hundreds and hundreds of pounds of vegetation every single day. Not only should that strike you as a problem up in the Arctic, but don't forget Back then, we weren't in this interglacial warm period. Back then, we were in a glacial cycle, which means it was even colder. The snow and ice came down even further than, than it does now in terms of the polar region. There would have been no way for the mammoths to actually survive there. Okay, maybe, mm. they, had, maybe they had enough fur to beat the cold. There was no food. There's not enough food at those latitudes right now to support right. the mammoths and we're in an interglacial warm period when they froze it was a glacial period there was even less and the only explanation is that area wasn't at the arctic it wasn't at the polar region they were at much lower latitudes in a much more temperate climate and then that area was thrust to the polar region as the world turned over huh. and so um yeah th- th- that whole story with with major white and Project Nanook in the Arctic broke open so, so many um, hidden things. It it tied so many things together. Um, and even though technically he committed a very, very serious crime, we're very lucky that Major White kept all that information and gave it to his son. Um, yeah. That book, World of Peril, is absolutely fantastic. And to this day, it's still classified. The government acknowledges project nanook existed but they don't go beyond the whole they were up there to uh you know do war scenario and war planning and war preparation just in case russia came over the top they don't admit anything else that happened from there but we have the documents in that book that major white saved we have the pentagon documents as well and the documents that the Rand Corporation, yeah, they've had their hand in stuff for decades and decades and decades. Yeah. St- stuff from all three confirming. And the Rand Corporation actually did the math on how the Earth would actually tilt 90 degrees during hmm. the these these magnetic shifts on the planet. They actually made the model. And so the, it's really one of the most fascinating aspects of this entire discussion is that it's been about 80 years the U.S. government has known that the world turns over and that it is intimately related to the magnetic pole shift, which, of course, is well underway here again right now. Yeah. And so. Uh, so key puzzle pieces, key puzzle pieces. Yeah, really interesting. So Admiral something? Byrd, Admiral Byrd, he, uh, your understanding, he didn't that whole story about him going to Antarctica. That was a cover. I can't tell you he never went to Antarctica, but I can tell you that the period of time when those books claim he was there and flew inside the earth and met beings inside the earth. Right. The time claimed in the book, he was definitively in the Arctic with Major White and Project Nanook. That doesn't mean he never went to Antarctica. That doesn't mean he didn't do other interesting things. Doesn't mean he didn't see or discover some amazing things. All I can tell you for sure is that the timeline from that book doesn't match up with reality because he was confirmed to be in the Arctic with Major White and Project Nook at that time. Interesting. Interesting. Go ahead, watchful. So, so I mean, I guess what I'm saying, like, it, it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily debunk 
Admiral Byrd's Antarctic claims, we can be pretty sure that at least the timeline given in Admiral Byrd's books about that is at least a little bit off. Um, and it certainly does cast a bit of doubt on his claims. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm a hardline evidence kind of guy. I can't say it fully debunks that he did amazing things in Antarctica. There, the, I, I couldn't say that and I wouldn't say that. So I, I think yeah. about what their motivation would be for the story change. Uh, I guess that's what leaves me pondering because. Oh yeah. It, you, you could, you could spin that one around in your head <laughs> all day. Yeah. I've been spinning it around in my head for a couple of years, but um, you know, to me, the more, the more important thing specifically for my work, which is the cyclical magnetic pole shift, bringing about the disaster cycle of earth. I mean, that's what that book was about really that's that's what the mm. secret aspect of project nanook was all about and it finally explains so many things about the mammoths about the world turning over or swaying like a drunkard which is basically a fun way of saying turning you know the earth's tilt changes yeah um, a lot of stuff was was really was was really illuminated by that by that work and and the things that major white kept and gave to his son just yesterday we were talking about um the where in enoch where it talks about evil spirits are the disembodied nephilim and we okay. were speculating we were speculating that if the the those evil spirits are stuck here on earth and are able to you know go into people and possess people there's there's scripture that kind of supports that well not kind of it actually does support that it was interesting. We were wondering, like, you know, could these disembodied spirits be like, you know, the Emperor Nero? Was he Nephilim? And when he died, does his spirit roam the earth? And does he go into somebody else? If the, if that doesn't explain, you know, in Ephesians where it talks about we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. If you don't have these spirits that have been roaming the earth for thousands of years aware of information and technology and things like the earth, the pole shift, if they're not responsible for actually like hiding this information to where you can see, like they're aware of what it means and they're going through to extreme lengths in order to keep this information from the public so that we're, we're blinded by what's really going on in the world. It was a really interesting, it's really interesting when you carry these, these ideas out to fruition to what it could potentially mean. And things like this, like, I don't think very many people are aware that the, the earth could potentially move out of its position. Uh, if it weren't for, you know, w uh, workmen of the word and workmen of the creation, like yourself doing the work that you do, it would be, com we would be completely blind to this. I can't imagine what it's going to be like when it actually happens. This is one of the reasons yeah. why I think it, we're, we're told to watch and pay attention. Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm glad you mentioned what you did a, a moment ago. Um, so first of all, I think it's pretty clear that those there's some kind of evil uh, yeah. penetrating individuals, and it's on yes. two different levels. One on the masses. They use they, them pronouns, just like Legion uses we. Um, oh. it, seems, it, it, it seems to come with a burning desire to change one's hair color to bright blue or pink or purple. Or green. <laughs> the other ones are going into the, you will know them by their hair color. The you know, the other ones are going to the powerful people on the planet. And you mentioned yeah. that part of the Bible that says we're fighting against principalities and, um, you know, the, the evil forces of, of this. Hmm. If you read the King James version of that part, and then you read the Geneva Bible version of that, the Geneva Bible includes the politicians in that as being interesting. The 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 princes of darkness on this planet. Huh. That was, for some reason, that's wow. been King James. Um, huh. I actually found somebody who did a really good examination and showed side by side the King James version and the Geneva version, and how the King James version took out that politicians and royalty and other stuff like that were the actual princes that uh, 
princes of darkness and, and other things like that. But in the Geneva Bible, I actually retweeted the guy on, 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 I guess it's reposted now. I'm, I'm never going to get used to calling it X and posting. Right. It's always yeah. going to be Twitter and tweeting to me. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it's amazing that you mentioned that because I literally just came across that on X Twitter I, six day, six or seven days ago. And I was like, wow, I didn't know that. I had ne I've never owned a Geneva Bible. <laughs> um, so um Re really fascinating stuff and it all comes together and when you look when you think about that that really makes sense when you look at the world today um yeah for sure especially especially things like the world economic forum the current administration in the united states the administration in canada new zealand australia and the, some of the things yeah. that they're doing to the people you're uh, spot on yeah tearing everything down Awfully, they're awfully coordinated, almost supernaturally. Yeah. It's it can't be a coincidence. No, it's it not. Be a right. coincidence from from a political, a cultural, an economic, and a spiritual stance. This is a coordinated, simultaneous destruction, intentional, of everything right. that has made this world what it is now. Um, yeah. And, you know, obviously things weren't perfect, but I mean, when I was a kid, even if these plans were in place, they weren't out in public like this and the world was not such a terrible place. It really wasn't that bad. Okay. You got people who will point like, but what about this? This was happening. No, shut up. The world was a wonderful place. It really was. I mean, everything was taboo back then. We, yeah. We literally have. We, we we literally have people, you know, children below the poverty line in this country with access to better technology and medical care than the pharaohs of Egypt. Like that's right. I don't want to hear anything about how the world wasn't getting better and better and better because it absolutely was. Look at what we're doing right now. Holy cow! Could you imagine your your grandparents as a child? And explaining to them, all right, so in 2024, this is what we're going to do. We're going to be talking to people through electromagnetic waves in different parts of the planet. And we're going to be able to broadcast that out to the entire world simultaneously. <laughs> Not all, of these back things are, 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 all of these things are either being torn apart or they're being turned against us, with, as in the case of technology and medicine and things like that. And so all of the things that made this world what it is today are either being undercut or they are being turned against us. And it's all happening so fast and all at the same time across all those vectors I mentioned that it can't be. A coincidence it can't be unintentional mm -hmm. or an accident this is happening on purpose absolutely and, uh... absolutely well it's interesting the signs the signs in the scripture seem to be lining up the signs in the creation seem to be lining up you know and it's interesting that you mentioned the the politicians that were left out of there uh, one of the couple of episodes back we were talking about antichrist we're probably going to go into this again um, in, in regards to Revelation 13, uh, I have a different theory on Revelation 13 with the two beasts being the, the first beasts, because we know that Jesus, he didn't, he didn't come to start individual churches. He came to build the temple of God. So when it talks about the first beast that has seven heads, my mind went to thinking about the seven churches that are talked about in Revelation 2 and 3. And I correlated that because one of those seven churches, Sardis, is the dead church that has a name that it lives. I didn't think it was a coincidence that you have uh, the first beast in Revelation 13 has got a head wound, uh, you know? So if you correlate that to where the first beast is the seven churches, and then the, the second beast gets its, you know, forms after that, it's like, I wonder if that's not illustrating the systems because beasts, uh, defined by Daniel are basically kingdoms or systems of control. Even the, I think even the seven heads uh, have 10 crowns, right? Crowns often referred to yeah. you know, leaders in charge, which you could correlate with politicians. If, if that's not given kind of a history of 
after Jesus was crucified and ascended, his disciples went out and, and started spreading the, the, the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. And then you can see the adversary just goes to work corrupting that. So you get yeah. these seven churches and they've got problems. And that's what Revelation you know, two and three talk about. It's like, here's the things that I commend you for. And here are the things that you need to change. So it's like you can already see like the, the heads of those churches corrupting things. It's almost like a cycle of the world with the, you know, the God of this world who's constantly corrupting the, the minds of man. But then you have this drastic change to where you have this next beast, the second beast. I almost wonder if it's not correlated with a little horn, but we know that Rome stopped being an empire and became basically a religion. And this is something that we're, you know, we've been hinting on and we're going to, you know, continue to go deeper into this. Matter of fact, we have another guest who's going to, I think she comes on tomorrow, right? She's a, uh, re I'll she's look. a research assistant for uh, um, a pretty big pastor who has a, a pretty big church in Texas. Um, we're going to go into further detail in the Roman Catholic church and just the extreme amount of evil that they're responsible for in this world. But there's this correlation to where it almost looks like that second beast is potentially the empire, the Roman empire reimagined as a religion in order to go over the entire world. And it's interesting that you point out that, you know, they're high, that, that it's hiding the fact that, you know, we're wrestling against politicians. Cause it's just like, it's almost like that's what's responsible for the evil in this world is you get these evil people in charge that are controlling what we believe and, you know, how we live. And it seems like we've been in this period of grace and it's almost like we're coming back around. And I almost wonder if that's not the whole purpose of Revelation 13 is to give us a history lesson to know what to look for. Well, you know, I will say this. It's important that you do things like that. It's important that there's somebody doing the biblical version of right. what I'm doing with natural science, geophysics, astrophysics, galactic physics. Um, I think equally important is the other thing that Jesus came to do, which is bring a sword. Mm. Um, I remember when I was a kid and I first heard about the wheat and the chaff, I'm sitting there like, how are we supposed to know which? I don't think like that anymore. I think they're making themselves very clear. Uh, and, uh, you know, as much as there is the Christian imperative for peace and uh, lack of violence, lack of barbarism. I hate to say it, but I don't think that we're going to be able to pull this off just by praying and having faith. I mean, did God tell Noah to just sit in the corner and pray, or did he tell him, yo, do work, son, build this? That's right. Um, no, you're right. He, he, our, had, the, our, he had the Israelites. What's our version of that? Um, yeah. Because these people are going to take over the planet if nobody stops them. No, you're well, right. In Jesus' day, that everyone thought that he was going to bring a sword during that day and age. He, they thought that he was going to take on the Roman Empire. I think they were just off 2,000 years. Yeah, I mean, there's several incidents in the Old Testament where God had the Israelites wipe out complete town, men, women, and children. And that, that happened more than a dozen times. It, there was a, a, a point where the line had to be drawn. Otherwise, civilization essentially wouldn't continue. It, it, it relied on action being taken not that i'm condoning any type of craziness like that but there is biblical history of exactly what you're talking about i i know this it would be helpful if we could get some kind of guidance on <laughs> that because uh, i don't know how much i trust the world population to figure that out on on their own um yeah but yeah anyway um I did not expect that I would be having such a biblical conversation. <laughs> it's something Welcome that fascinates channel. us. This, yeah, this is this is what we do. We, you know, the whole right the whole. On. You know, the fun, interesting thing is, is this is we're actually patterning our business model after Tim Pool. 
Uh, so that's why it's two oh. witnesses live because, you know, our, our objective is to go live and talk about these things, but from a spiritual biblical perspective, you know, we want to have guests on, we want to hear other people's perspectives. You know, we're, we're not so, we're not so sold in what we believe that we're not willing to, you know, hear an opposing opinion. That's, that's kind of our thing. We, we, we want to hear, you know, the, the arguments for and against what it is that, you know, we believe and challenge everything we think we know. And, you know, right. and we're hoping to get to truth by doing that. You know, I always say that, you know, truth withstands the fire of scrutiny. Yeah. Absolutely. Ben, what do you think about, it seems like there's been an awfully large uptick in something kind of coming through the veil, whether it be quote, quote, aliens or I can't help but notice that it's really stepping up. And some of the strange things that you see in the skies, even if half of them are fake, there's still a lot of them happening. And just just like what happened at the Miami Mall uh, a few weeks ago, I, I can't make sense out of it all. Yeah, a lot of it is hard to make sense of. I do know this. I really wish somebody had gotten some good photos or video out of that Miami Mall. That would right? be really helpful, wouldn't it? Um, that's my big argument in, sky, in terms of the things in the sky you know there are enough of the photos and videos and there are enough stories from you know, from Africa from South America from from so many different places that are def they're not ambiguous at all they're like no dude came down from the sky and told us what to do um, or, or helped us do this, um, that I got to believe something on that realm is legitimate, whether it's angels, fallen angels, aliens. All we can really do is guess. Um, it, I, it would also seem to me that with the amount of, with the vast amount of stars and galaxies and planets and how much water they're finding out in space, it would shock me if there wasn't life out there somewhere, what, what we would call yeah. aliens that it would shock me. I am pretty sure that some, obviously not all, some of the things we're seeing in the sky is our government screwing around. I think yes, they've right. got technology that is way beyond what they're telling us. And I think it's the U S government. Um, I'll tell you what I don't buy. These people that have been coming out in the last couple months, who are like government whistleblowers and that congressional hearing, I'm not buying them a word of that. Distraction. Like literally none of it. Um, not only did some of it not make sense, but it was too perfectly timed and presented as a distraction. And some of them were, were giving some tells of untruthfulness. Now, I am by no means a human lie detector. But also, there are some relatively basic signs of deception in people's body language and other things like that, that y you don't need to be specially trained for 10 years by the FBI to be a human lie detector to recognize these things. And I, I thought I saw a couple of them. And so I I'm not buying some of the official stuff that has come out in the last couple of months. I could be wrong. But... Um, you know, it, it seems like it seems like so many things are being revealed. But in addition to that, there's going to be so much thrown at us that is not real as well. It's going to be hard, and it has been hard to discern what is what is real that is being revealed yeah. versus sleight of hand and tricks. And I think that's. I don't think that's going to stop. I think that's going to continue. It's a psyop. Yeah. Yeah. They, you know. By the so way, I what, just figured out how to put this thing in dark mode. It looks ten thousand times cooler when you put it in dark mode. Holy moly! <laughs> 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 oh yeah, the uh, the the Click. window for. Yep. Yep. Just so what? It out. So what would be their objective then by? clouding the information pool so much that you can't discern truth from from fiction well i think that you know i think that there are a couple of potential answers and it may be one of these or a combination of them 
Um, one, if we are talking about people who are literally either possessed by evil or they're on that kind of spectrum, this is exactly what you'd want to do to keep the truth as hidden as possible. The other thing is, they seem to be throwing every kind of, this is so important, this is such a disaster coming, except for the risks from the sun as we're losing the magnetic field, the risks of losing the magnetic field in terms of the ozone, the risks of Earth's crust unlocking from the mantle and literally turning over the existence of Earth's disaster cycle. Um, a lot of it seems like it could be a distraction. Why? To keep us focused on something else, to prevent us from going into chaos and anarchy, to allow them more time to gather up as much power and resources and control as they possibly can. Um, you know, somewhere in the midst of those answers I just gave, or a combination of them, and probably some I haven't thought of yet, are are pretty good explanations and fairly reasonable given given the kinds of conversations that we're having about this, right? Yeah. Um, and so I, it's my opinion that it's 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 a combination. They're trying to kill many birds with one stone here. Uh, they're trying to hide the truth. They're trying to buy themselves time. They're trying to keep us focused and. You know, e even if everyone's freaking out over aliens or the economy or, or, or other stuff like that, at least we're still going to our jobs. At least we're still paying taxes. At least if you call 911, eventually somebody's going to show up. If you go to the bank, somebody's going to be there. If you go to a gas station, the pump's going to work. If you go to the grocery store, there's going to be food there. If you turn on your faucet, the water's going to come out, and you're pretty confident that it's been purified beyond sewage which it once was and so they do kind of need that to prepare themselves and uh keep us off of the back of truth until the right moment yeah yeah they don't want anybody knowing until everybody knows and if some people figure it out fine as long as they're small voices and what they're saying is so out there by comparison to what they're saying on the idiot box only a tiny fraction of individuals are going to believe them anyway, so it doesn't really matter from yeah. their perspective. That's why they stoke the division. If oh yeah, if we're if we're busy fighting each other and arguing over the the complete cloud of news of disinformation, misinformation, or truth, or whatever it is. Essentially, we don't unite together to deal with the, the actual problem, which is them. So, you know, united we stand, divided we fall, that type of situation. Well, yeah, and you know, this really, I'm a big believer that they've been planning something like this for a long time and that they are very patient people. I mean, we can call yeah. them evil, scum, this and that. We should give credit where it's due. They're excellent planners and they're very, very patient. This has been in the works for a very long time and then occupy wall street and the arab spring and what happened in egypt and they were like good lord everyone's waking up bust out the social justice war and so literally the same people who were super anti-establishment who were literally doing that all over the world all of a sudden 50 percent of them are Take the jab, wear your mask. You know, it, they, they, they divided the most active and vocal aspect of our culture. Like they saw, it wasn't everybody. I mean, not everybody was marching on Wall Street. Not everybody in Egypt was, was rioting. But they basically took that section of people who were willing to speak, who would not be quiet and who would take action and they divided us in half. And they did a very, very good job. Again, credit where it's due. I hate that it happened. I think they're evil for doing so. And I think their intentions are evil. Right but down the middle. They won round one. They yeah. won round one in a, in, in a yeah. big way. Flawless victory. So what do you think their intentions are with 
flooding the country from the southern border. Uh, I'm suspicious of that. Mm. Two things. They're going to use them to vote, and then they're going to use them in the Civil War. Mm. Yeah, the military. Because yeah. the, they're, they're, the, they're going to they're be like, look, we've given you guys free housing. We've given you guys free food. We've given you guys free medical care. You want that to continue? Serve, and you'll get citizenship. Because the and true patriots aren't going to turn on the people. They're pushing yep. the patriots out of the military. And, and they're pushing the people who look like their neighbors out of the military. And so they're going to they're going to use them to vote. They're going to give them the right to vote. They're going to count their votes. They're going to I hope I hope you don't get mad at me for saying this. They're going to cheat again. Yep. And then they're going to use those individuals to try to fight back when when the patriots right. rise up if they You're do right. so. Yeah. And you know, here's the thing. I would have thought we would that it would have happened already. I don't know what patriots are waiting for. I mean, yeah. It's, it's nice posting memes on on Twitter and X. It's nice, you know, doing some of these things, but it's it's not it's not going to get the job done. Yeah, it's I think it's I think it's I think it's spiritual. I think the reason why it, there hasn't been this uprising when when it seems like there should, it's like you know you you hear people get so angry like. When you allow these things to happen, you know, when you're a police officer and you just say, I'm just doing my job, you know, it's like they're yeah. they're the problem. They're evil. I think it's actually more than that. I think it's I think it's I the timing of it isn't right. And, and getting back to kind of space uh, and signs and stuff like that, there's an eclipse that's coming up in April, April 8th, which I believe lines up with the Hebrew calendar for the first of the year. And somebody else the, was telling me that the other day. There's so somebody much significance. Yeah, there's so much significance around that particular eclipse. I'm really interested to see what happens on that day. I almost wonder if that's not the day when when, you know, the the proverbial crap hits the flan, the fan because of the significance. So it's it's in Cetus. The eclipse happens in Cetus with uh, right between Pisces, which Pisces is the two fish and they have a chain holding Cetus. So you have a dragon that's being restrained by two fish. I mean, th just uh, the, the illiterate Bible person could, you know, put two and two together and think, you know, that could be significant. And it lines up with, um, I think it's the festival of first fruits is 20, 20 days later. And you have this like correlation with 144,000 being first fruits. There's so much reference in the scripture regarding first fruits that it's like, I almost wonder, and like, look at where the world's at today with the wars. There's, you know, three new wars, you know, there's 20 some odd existing wars. You know, you have all of this stuff that's coming to a head, especially with the people coming over the border. It's, it's just like, I think it all, pop I feel like we're in the eye of the storm right now and it's all getting ready to pop off. And I have my eyes on that April 8th eclipse because the pattern's been pretty solid so far with as, you know, each one of these eclipses that are, that are relevant seems to bring some new crap along with it, you know, from pandemic to, you know, you know, the administration to unions with other countries, it's all playing towards, it looks like to me, April. I'm, I'm expecting this to be kind of a the, maybe the start of the Great Tribulation, uh, you know, maybe maybe something else. So uh, a good thing to be looking for there is. All right. So what's one of the few things Republicans and Democrats in the United States agree on the uniparty? And I'm not talking about Trump. I'm not talking about Vivek. I'm talking about the uniparty here. They love war. They absolutely mm. love war. They do. That's the third aspect of letting in all these people through the southern border. Because you know what I'm noticing? There aren't as many Mexican as Mexicans as I was expecting. There's a lot of much darker skinned people from Africa Good point. and from the Middle yeah. East. I'm noticing no women, no children, no elderly people whatsoever. And with our support of Israel, with what's happening with Iran in the Red Sea, how long until something real or some kind of false flag based on that takes place as a pretense for us to go yeah. deeper into war.
in the Middle East. I mean, they have. Y- you could. You could write this one with your eyes closed. That's right. Really, you could. They w- they need something. Um, as as the candidate that won Iowa the other night is gaining more and more traction, they're going to have to throw something out in left field to stop things because I think that's one reason we haven't seen this quote quote uprising because there's still hope. Everybody sees that our candidate is gaining traction in all these states and people are hoping that, hey, look, we're going to have a fair election this time. Maybe we don't need to do this. But that's my spin on it. Yeah. Yeah. But they're... It, the closer that we get and the more obvious that it is that that person is going to win, you can, you know, if, if I'm a gambling man, they will do something to cause a oh, you know, yeah. false if, flag, if, if, anything. If he gets the nomination and his popularity keeps surging and they don't get him thrown in jail, they will never let this election take place. Never. That's right. I, 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 I see no way that, uh, that they're going to do this. Yeah, agreed. So that's that's their backup. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, what else is on your mind, guys? <laughs> that's, that's such a lovely topic. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's it's interesting. We could go on and on and on for that. It's um, you know, it's you recently. It's, I, I caught one of your episodes and you recently had mentioned that there's some new science coming out that's uh, that is evidence against uh, it wasn't carbon dating, but it was against uh, their estimates of time. Oh, um, yeah. What was um, so I mean, something. The, the, yeah, go ahead. Their isotope dating in general is a complete disaster, a complete that's disaster when you do it with carbon. Things always look too old. When you do it with oxygen or chlorine, things always look too young. Uh, Argon can be okay. Really, the only bulletproof one I've seen is Krypton dating. Um, Mm. When they use Krypton to to date ice, they are spot on. Anything else, I swear they're just making stuff up. Um, that's that's always been my argument. It's just like when anytime you hear 13 trillion years, it's like you're lying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're just making yeah. that up. I will say I'm not I'm not much on the young earth hypothesis that this planet's only 6000 years old. Um mm. I believe it was reborn 6000 years ago. Um I think I'm in that same boat. Reborn, it was reborn 12000 years ago. 18,000 years ago, 24,000 years ago. Um, all those cycles. All yeah, those cycles. Exactly. Uh, well, where do the but, angels come from? There's things that we know about the angels. You know, they have supernatural capability, but a lot of the references to them is they're like us. I mean, potentially even able to have some similar genetics. You know, were they from a previous earth? Per previous cycle? That's an interesting question. That's an interesting question. Um, and where did again, the dinosaurs? something I had... Yeah, I don't have scientific evidence for, about the angel question, but it's, it's an interesting thing to think about. Where do the dinosaurs yeah, right. fit into all this? As one thing I've wondered about. That's a good question. Um, that's a very good question. You know, they they get their dates wrong. So was it 35 million years ago that they roamed the earth? For me, there's no question that they did. But where do they fit oh, into yeah, that equation? Yeah. You know, I don't know if we have a great answer for that. Um, I don't know for uh, there is some evidence that there was overlap between dinosaurs and at least human ancestors. Um, There's evidence that they were also around long, long before anything even remotely resembling a human ancestor was here. Um, I know I don't buy the idea that the devil put the fossils in the ground to confuse us. Um, Yeah, no. And I, I do think that they probably were around a lot longer than people realize. Um, yeah. So, but I mean, it, it, it's really hard to know. It's hard it, to know. Well, the, it's one of the reasons why I'm interested in the, uh, the, the, the any t- dating technology that I hear about the ISO, t- you know, when they're wrong, because 35 million years, I mean, they're finding like s- stretchy flesh now 
uh, with dinosaur and bones. Oh, yeah. So were they were so, they just uh, wiped out the in the flood? About, I think the one you were talking about was the thing from New Mexico where they thought that these footprints were laid down 21 to 23,000 years ago, and then they revised That's that the to like 7,000 years ago. Um, That's the one. Which is, which is a ridiculous – I mean, you cut the age of them by 66% basically, if not a little more. But that's not even the craziest ones I've seen. There was this Australian crater that they thought was 300,000 years old. Now they're thinking it's like just over 100,000 years old. And it's like, wait a minute. How are you going to be off by 200,000 years in something well, that's only actually 100,000 years old? The wor- yeah. the, the, well, either the worst or the best example, depending on how you look at this situation. The most extreme example was the Tibetan ice cores, the, the, the ice caps up at the top of Tibet, up at the top of the world. They had previously used things like chlorine isotopes and said, we think this ice has been here more than half a million years, 500,000 years. And then they used Krypton dating and they're like, OK, well, we now think the maximum age is 17,000 years. And it's like, wait a minute. That's drastic. What do you mean? What do you mean? You thought it was older than half a million, and now you think the oldest it could be is 17,000, meaning it could be 15, it could be 12,000, it could be 5,000. They have no idea what they're doing. They have no right. idea what they're doing whatsoever. Um, yeah. No, you're right. I, I tell you what, uh, even just to slightly change the topic, I keep seeing these AI robots that, you know, they were walked out on the ball field the other night with the, the with the I robots flesh, among us. the flesh skin. They, they had, exp- I, I, it spooks me even because I keep going back to this, but they, you could see the mechanics on the side of their head, but they had skin and expressions. Like there was someone home upstairs and you could see them thinking it was creepy. Huh. Yeah, they they attended a ball game the other day. They were walking around in the crowd. Camera kept cutting to them, and there was five or six of them sitting in the crowd. It was clear they were robots because the side of their heads and the back of their head was mechanics, but they had a flesh face. The thing that got me was the way their expressions. They were they were thinking and had expressions on their face. That's what gets me about this thing in Miami and these, you know, in, in, in Africa and South America and stuff like that. It's like with AI and these robots, you know, they're putting out these blurry photos. It's like at least go through the trouble of AI generating something believable, you know? <laughs> huh. Yeah. That's well, a good point. There's a lot of speculation on a lot, you know, a lot of these things that we quote, quote, see or not sure that we see that these beings or whatever they are, their presence puts off an EMP style effect, which uh, kills electronics and degrades video and stuff of that nature. Now that's just speculation, yeah. but that's something that I've heard. That's a consistent comment. Yeah. Hmm. How convenient. <laughs> right. Um, well, no, I, I mean, this is those disposable cameras. <laughs> <laughs> You'd wind them up. Yep. You remember those? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Little Kodak cameras. Yep. yep. Unfortunately, I don't even know where you'd get those processed these days if you had one. They there is still there's still a couple places you can get them processed. I know quite a few. Yeah. Actually, Walgreens. Christopher would, be, Christopher would be the one to know that. He's the professional photographer. Nah, I mean, there's tons of places. You can Costco, Walgreens, CVS. They still yeah. do that stuff. They got a little kiosk. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh. I think they even still sell that stuff. But um, yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> well, people, they like, they like instant. They like uh, the flexibility of, you, people use their phones now. So it's, it's kind of like yeah. a dying thing. Unless someone likes, you know, the creative side of actually having a print. But, you know, it was fun having you, Ben, man. I enjoyed the conversation. I know you got to put your kids to, to sleep soon. So, you know, I'm not going to try to keep you too much longer. Well, you know, if I can say one more thing. Of course. Um, yeah. You know, 
This is one of the most amazing things. And this was actually the nail in the coffin for me in terms of realizing just how much science and religion were matching up here. Because I knew the way the Bible said people were going to start acting. And then I take a look at what's happening now with Earth's magnetic field changing. And it's weakening as the poles are shifting. It's letting in more cosmic rays from space. They have done so many studies on how these things affect the human brain. Hmm. And the two most prominent things that happen are first, it affects the processes in the hippocampus, which degrades cognition which is a nice fancy mm. way of saying it makes you dumber. The second wow. thing it does is it excites, over excites the locus ceruleus, which is deep, deep within your brain. But it's the part of your brain that reacts to anxiety, panic, fear, terror. And so basically, and you know, causes overall emotional instability. And so if it seems like the world is getting dumber and more emotionally unstable, and more panicky and fear reactive. Yes. And not only is there a scientific explanation for it, but this is exactly what is supposed to happen according to the story. The only thing I can say is I'm really glad I know how the story ends. <laughs> because, uh, Amen. Yeah. That's about yeah. all we can cling to right now. I saw you talk Love about it. that the other day. Yeah, I love how you Support. always end no fear. Yeah. And it's hard to have fear when you know the end of the story. And That's folks right. in the audience, if you have not seen Ben's work, it, my favorite video of his is it's it goes into detail uh, on the coming Earth's disaster cycle. It really, it really nails it. It's a 15, 16 minute video. It's not the real long one where he goes into deep detail, but he does a, a nice brief summary where he just recaps what's, you know, what's in the forecast. I'll link it in the description because it is, it's worth the watch. I've, I've probably watched it five or six times now because it, it lines up so much. It's, um, <laughs> it makes so much sense. You know, it yeah, just we'll like in the Bible the community later. Yeah, the Bible talks about the sun, you know, turns dark. And that's when that the the shell around the sun starts to harden up. And then it's, I thought you were spot on, man. And folks need to watch that because it's very educational. It's, uh, it's a well, good I one. I appreciate that. And I appreciate the invite. It was good to chat with you guys. Yeah, we'll yeah, have to do it again. Great. Thanks for coming. Have fun Absolutely. on Tim Pool's show, man. He's, that'll be, uh, that'll be interesting. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I'm much more familiar with Tim Cast IRL than I am with the Culture War show that he does. But mm. uh, Jimmy Corsetti and I are going to do the Culture War show with him on Friday morning, and so uh, hopefully it all goes well. Right on. Sweet. Yeah. Right on. They get into they get into some biblical uh, conversation over there sometimes. It'll be interesting if you could bring anything around that you, that we talked about today when you're uh, talking with them. Because uh, Ian uh, yeah. is especially pushing that kind of stuff, too, because he's really interested in the spiritual, uh, not necessarily specifically from a Christian perspective, but he's, you know, very aware of, you know, the science and the spiritual, and he's constantly trying to put those things together. Splendid. Well, Ben, I, I really enjoyed having you, man. And uh, maybe we can circle back around another time. But uh, I'm sure the audience loved having you. I'm appreciated that you took the time to chat with us. And guys, unless you got anything else, uh, that's it for tonight. And everybody have a good night. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you thanks guys again. again. God bless. All right. God bless. Okay, okay. Hey, folks. Thanks for being here. Again, we really enjoy being with everybody. We go live every day except Friday night, Saturday night, Monday at noon. We go live with Dr. Sean Michael Greener. We appreciate everybody so much. Have a good night.